Good evening, our saints of God, and my Temple Missionary Baptist Church, to our friends abroad, to those who have joined us in the previous two nights. We are again excited to be back about our Father's business on this, the third watch of this 2021 revival. God has certainly been good to us, brought us thus far, and blessed us on the past two nights, and we certainly expect no less than that tonight. God has richly blessed us with his word, and certainly we are grateful. We want to, lest we forget, honor some of those that have been so instrumental, especially those of you who have been prayerful that this revival, though uh, really not as long as it used to be, not five nights, but this three night revival, has met the need in many of us. We thank God too that you have been prayerful, you have been supportive, both our tech team, those that at home and abroad who have just kept us ever before the face of God. We want to ask you if you would at home to bow in a moment of prayer as we set ourselves apart for the message for tonight on this Friday night. The messages that we've been given have come straight from the Word of God. We attend no less than that again on this watch. Let us pray. Father God, we come now thanking you for your blessings to bring us to another year, another revival. And Father God, we know that it might be that we have not been as lengthy as we have often been, but we do that knowing that you still is able. You're still able to see to us receiving that in which we need. We pray now that the word will go forth and accomplish in your own words what you sent it to do. We thank you now and we give you praise and we give you glory. In the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Brothers and sisters at home, if you have a Bible close, uh, your phone or whatever, that you would look with us tonight in the 8th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 8, and we want to read eight verses from the eighth chapter of Matthew. And if you're at home and you want to read along with us, uh, that's great. We'll be uh, reading from chapter eight, verse one, all the way through verse eight. We will find recorded in these words, when he was come down from off the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And there were a leper and worshiped him saying, Lord, if thy will, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thy clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See thy tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, that came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously torment. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, if I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, I have soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and from the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And again Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the same hour. Would you say, man, with me again? My key verse for this afternoon, among so many others, comes from the eighth chapter and the eighth verse. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy 
that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. If you would underline, uh, speak the word only. Speak the word only. That is our main verse for tonight. That is our text scripture as we once again address our theme, living fearless in fearful times. Taken from 2 Timothy 1 and 7. We've already discussed previously in the past two nights how to live fearlessly and we must trust God. And then on last night we talked about if we are to live fearlessly, then our way of thinking must be different. And it is tonight that we want to share with you from the subject, if we are to remain fearless in fearful times, as Paul so vividly wrote to Timothy, then we must take God at his word. The subject again, take God at his word. For to trust God and to think right and to therefore live fearlessly also carries with it, my sisters and brothers, the, the mandate that we take God at his word. And it ought not to be a hard concept for us to take because we are peculiar in that we believe what God said. We believe that God said that whatever he says is truth. Not only is it truth, but it is absolute truth. And tonight we want to share for our edification that if we are to live fearlessly, not only should we have trust, but at the same time we must be thinking differently, and yet we must be taking God at his word. Tonight we know that in our incident in which Christ finds the centurion, that these points are pointed out very clearly. We know that they're pointed out clearly because verse 8 says, so that the centurion made it known to Jesus that he did not have to come personally, but what was necessary that he could just speak the word. He said, he said, speak the word only and my servant will be made holy. And then again, in Jesus himself, in verse 10, as we look at our context, says, when Jesus heard, he marveled and said, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. So Jesus based his, his comment to the centurion on, you said, speak your word only, and I found faith in that you said, just send your word. You don't have to come to yourself. You don't have to come to yourself. You just, just, just speak your word only, and and, and 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 that will suffice me. That will satisfy me. And he gave the reasons that we shall see that he was himself, the centurion himself, was a, a man of authority, and that he had under him others that were under his authority. And he he said within his own self that I can tell one to do this. And I can tell one to do that. And I can do this from afar. And having done it from afar, then they will respond to my word only. Now, my sister and brother, this is what God looks for in us if we are to live fearlessly. Though God may not be personally visible or God may not be uh, uh, hands on away from us, we are to expect that to live fearlessly. All we need is the word of God. The word that God has declared, that is all we need. And I'm a witness along with the centurion tonight and, and with the words of Jesus that, that the word of God is able to accomplish all that he says and will not return to your Lord. Especially now in the light of these recent events, we can be assured that if God speak a word over our situation, over our circumstances, over our families, over our businesses, over our lives, then that should suffice and that should be sufficient in and of itself. Taking God at his word simply means God said it, I believe it, and it's said. 
And if they live fearless, they're going to be those challenging times when we walk in our daily walk in these times when we don't have to just remember what God said. Not what the circumstances say, not what people are saying, but we right. don't have to take what God has said. Right. In summation of the text scriptures before us, here's what Jesus said, and I quote him again because he gave great commendations to this centurion when he said unto them, I have not found so great a faith. God has not found so great a faith in all the earth, just like he said unto this centurion. Until he finds somebody who will take what he says, face value, no strings attached, and say, thus be it unto me, according to thy word. Jesus went on to say uh, that, that, that that is faith because he went on to include that, that and said to the centurion, go thy way and, and thou hast believed. Now remember, he was believing, not having Jesus to come, just sin in his way. Some interesting things that we want to know about this centurion on this night. First of all, the centurion faith rested on his prayer. Number one, the centurion's faith rested on his prayer. Now, nowhere is it recorded to our attention that the centurion was, 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 was a follower of Christ, uh, that he had been in the company of Christ, in the, in the midst of Christ, other than in this instance, but he, his faith rested on his prayer. We know that because he, he, the, 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 when Matthew wrote it, he said he came beseeching him. The word meaning he come begging him, he come prayerfully bidding that he would do him the favor that he need. He come asking. He come asking not only for him, himself, but the greater emphasis should be he come asking on behalf of his servant. He said, my servant. Another thing of note is the centurion in and of himself noted that he was unworthy to even ask Yet acknowledging the power of God. And that's what we have to find ourselves in these times. We have to find ourselves acknowledging not only that we are maybe a bit faithless in some areas or prayerless in some areas, but we have to realize that if God would just speak his word over whatever we are facing, whatever besets us, then God will suddenly answer. Amen. With no reservations, Jesus said, and that's the way Jesus honors faith. With no reservation. That's how about Jesus on his prayer. He said, with no reservation, I will. I will come. And I hear him. And that's all the centurion had to go on. He didn't have nothing else. He just had the word of God, what Jesus uttered forth to go on. And, and, and having just that, what Jesus said and what Jesus answered was all he had. My sisters and brothers, we hope to take our time with this evening, but the centurion is likened to us. Sometimes all we have is faith and prayer. Sometimes all we have is faith and a promise of God. All we have is faith in God's word, what God has recorded, what God has put between the lines of Genesis and Revelation. That's all we have to go on. Amen. Sometimes all we have is the faith in the promises that God is able. Sometimes all we have is the, the promise that God is able to do more and be above all that we can think of, all that we can ask of. That's all we have. Sometimes that's all we have is faith. And if we have that faith, we can be diagnosed as Jesus being the centurion of great faith. That would be the response to him too when he turned and talked to the, the disciples. He said, I have not found no greater faith in all of it. I have not found it. The very hour he sees our faith, my sisters and brothers, and how we would take him at his word, solely on his word, the very hour when we take that step of faith and say, I'm going to believe God's word despite how it looks, how it appears, how it might go, how it may go. I'm just going to take God at his word and I'm going to believe what God says and so shall it be in the words of Mary done unto me. Now, this incident ends 
is no surprise. The centurion left, and Jesus healed him in that same hour. And I just want to remind us on this, the last night of this revival, that every word of God is true. He cannot lie. He is not a man such as we are that he should lie. God moves and God acts according to his word. The word of God is not bound. There is no hill that God cannot overclimb. There is no mountain that God cannot transcend. There is no valley that so deep God's word cannot reach. There is no height that too high that God's word cannot overcome. Furthermore, God is not deceitful when it comes to his word. As you very well know, my sisters and brothers, people will give us their word and they have good intentions, but circumstances and things that happen and transpire oftentimes will cause them not to be able to live with the word. But God is able to do above and all that we can think, and he's able to answer our prayers, answer our need, simply if we're just taken at his word. A walk with Jesus proves some things. Number one, it proves that God, when he sent his word, changes things. A walk with God proves that if we just take him at his spoken word, we can see miracles happen. The word of God has proven time and time again that God's word disregards the circumstances and the right. situation. God's word time and time again has proven that it can remove the fear Amen. and guarantee a victory. Yes, the word of God can break down the strongholds that set before us. The case in hand, we know that God's word, the descendant of his word, healed the sick. Even God's word has been proven to raise the dead, right. to give activity to those whose limbs were, were failing, to have given hope to those. God's word is a word sent from God can calm the storms in life. Amen. A word from God can not only calm the storm, but it can resurrect that which is falling apart. The word of God, when the lost sinner believes, it can save the sinner. Did not God say that if you will believe in your mouth and confess with your heart the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you will be saved? God's word has proven time and time again that lost sinners can come to him and take him at his word and find eternal life in him. For God declared in his word, for he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that yes. whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm a witness tonight. Are you a witness tonight that God will send his word and save your soul? That God will send his word and give you a new beginning? That God will transform your mind? How do I know? How do I know that God will is powerful? I want to share with you a few things. When men fear God and have sinned in the garden, and eternal damnation was our inheritance. God sent his word in the person of his son. When he needed somebody to go, the scripture attested the fact that he could find none that were more favorable than his own word. John declared that the word became life. And the word became the light of men. The word of God declared that he looked for someone to sin. He may have searched the scriptures. He may have searched the Old Testament. May have looked at Daniel and could not find one that he could sin. He may have looked at Isaac and Abraham and Jacob and could find nobody else to sin. But he looked at a lamb that was thrown slain before the foundation of the world and said, I will send him. And the word of God came in the person of his son. Are you glad about it? I'm glad that the word of God is so strong that he, when he come, he went out on a hill called Calvary. Yes. Oh, they took the word of God out on a hill called Calvary in heaven, got him out on the, on the hill called Calvary. They crucified the word of God. And the word of God died from the sixth to the ninth hour. The word of God died until the dead got up out the grave. The word of God that we could take at I had his word died on Calvary and then was placed in a borrowed tomb. But aren't you glad that early? Yes. One Sunday morning. Yes, Lord. 
The word of God got it with all power in his hand. The encouragement for us during this revival has been simple. Just believe that the word of God not only came, but the word of God is coming back. And if we're in the right frame of mind, if we just trust God, we can live fearless in these fearful times. All right. Oh, we have nothing to fear. In the words of uh, Roosevelt saying, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. I come to contradict that tonight. We don't have to fear fear because Jesus has taken the fear away. We can live fearless in these fearful times. Let our prayer, my sisters and brothers, be one that focuses on a new way of thinking, a new way of, of depth is to our trust in God and most of all, to a stronger belief in the power of the word of God. God is not short of his promises. God will do what he said. With that being said, we're going to bring the revival to a close, but we would be robbery if we did not extend an invitation. Whether you be virtually watching us, or maybe you may be at home or abroad, or wherever you may be, but if you've heard this message, and you've been blessed and you've been convicted enough to say, I want to take God at his word. If God has given me in his word what it requires to give my life to him, then you may come. You may come from wherever you are. You may make that known to some other Christian or to one of the deacons of our church or one of the members of the Mount Table Mission Baptist Church or the, even myself. And we would gladly see to it that you do all, get all the things done that you need to be welcome into the family of God. But it begins with you making that open confession that Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God in whom there is no other way that men might be saved. If you make that decision, please call us, phone us, let us know. Please stop by our church on, on, on Sunday or in the night future and let us know you made that confession and you are ready to be welcoming through the church, through baptism, and through membership. With that being said, we hope that this revival has been a blessing. And let us pass the word that a new way of thinking, a, a, deep, a deeper trust in God, and taking God at his word can remove all fear. God bless you. God keep you.